the darkness. It's another motor juice. That's a resource totem, a monument left behind by those that picked scrap, trying to keep the area clean. Who'd leave rubber scrap lying around like that? We all share the same destiny, destruction or survival. Curious about how Myriad's light can be so bright it reaches all the way out into the dead zone and Ankarti territory. Says you're welcome back. It's Skypook Outpost. The Ankarti tribe blew life into... Let's see. Where are one door? cautions you that they're aware you're allied to another tribe. The doors here are always open for a potential customer. There's no way they'll do that. They're smarter than you think. There's a serenity about this spot. It's a place for rest and recovery.
real match. Ooh. Disposed of him. Can't be too many days like this left at the rate the world is ending. Plank place like this is a fire trap. You're in pain. Good thing you're not clo clotted through. Scared of tight places. Looks like wholesome. A tidy little cave.
Fate is funny that way, but it won't always make you laugh. Make sure you don't walk off a cliff while you're night blind.
It's a wild sensation to be away from the open air. Smell that burning fuel. Bang Shelter 7C should have been stated right there in toxinol lettering. Your ears just pooped. As long as you're happy about it.
an approved improvement. Can't break it down any more than that. You might get a killer headache. Take matters back into your own hands. Work your way up. of glow.
time to do it on your own. That over there is Steepo Depot, the cliffside that Moo hangs on to. In Mo. Diava. Let's see. This one's impressed to see you out here. He figured you'd be dead by now. Not many are as tough and clever as you must be. Says a monster hunter hears many things on the wind. Mook says that all your power doesn't do you a bit of good if you're not willing to pull the trigger when the time comes. Choosing what to kill and what to spare are the most important decisions you'll make. You might have a steady aim, but you need to be sure that you pick your targets with care. It's hard to make those life or death decisions for others, but someone's got to do it. Otherwise, they'll do it themselves and you know they'll miss. When it comes to monsters, he mostly picks who dies. Says it's wild that the world seems to be coming back, but he supposes that means more monsters for him to shoot. Wonders why you work so hard to keep things alive. Bullets help thin the herd instead. Says you should give up on working with the stubborn myriad. He keeps trying to put out their lights and they keep putting up new ones. He's afraid you're just as stubborn as them. But enough of that, right? He says the wildlife, nature, has changed and turned against us. Instincts of survival took over when the world changed. He's not sure about their veggie diet anymore, and if it's changed, who knows what it's done with the chemical composition of their body output. Right now, though, he feels he's come to a point where he's got a pretty clear idea on the whereabouts of monsters, both tall and short. Says as big as they are, the world is bigger. To find where they are, you need to see where they've been. Moog says you must learn to walk before you can run. It takes practice before you can call yourself a monster hunter. Fortunately for you, he can help. He understands you need to start off with something small before you go big. There's no better place to start than a squip cave. Hunting down a couple of these little critters for yourself should keep you on your toes. Says you stick to the haunting and shots present themselves later. Everyone's going to hear you coming. Where you're going, you don't need roads. Grip hole up. Place is just filled with critters.
good then. story is about a hero. Yuck! Fire has it. Sickening. Gonna need a key of some kind. Bolted shut. Once the volatization from the nuclear waste evaporated, a volatile gas rose through the soil and infested structures, even Toxanol's own buildings. So, in a way, they caused their own death. Idea. Go knock the lid off that sludge truck. It'll fill the place up and you can get up to that entrance there. Got it. Good one. Just what you were looking for. You need to line up the switches so they match. Just a few moves left. Make them count. Good. That's enough electric current to initiate the actuators and activate the framework. Thank you. 
Let's go gunslinging ding dong. Wonder what you can find down here. Double the grip for twice the damage. Stomping time. Look at the controls in this thing. He says that's enough scripts to sustain the Mecton's claw crane cannon with infinite ammunition. Well done. That's the special weapon he made to store the scripts in the Mecton. It will be strong enough to launch them at the Jumbo Puff. Gizmo's made vehicles before to confront the Jumbo Puff himself, but failed. But this time, it's different. The Mecton will be strong enough to do the job. It's time to put a stop to the World Eater now, otherwise he fears the damage it's caused to the tree already will be too much to handle. He asks you to not even think about taking on the Jumbo Puff on foot. You'll need the Mecton to do the job, take his word for it. There's time to improve the Mecton before you confront the Puff. There are more wreck boxes out in the dead zone with gear you should be able to equip the Mecton with on your own. He got the idea to build the Mecton when he found a big crate containing the metal frame for something Toxanol had named an exoskeleton. Gizmo wants to help if he can. Says you're welcome back. 